For all those who are fed up with regular pumping in a conventional pressure sprayer but still cannot do without such a device, I have the perfect solution for you in today's video. Some time ago, Makita has introduced a battery-powered pressure sprayer and it comes in an 18-volt format. Specifically, we have in front of us the new 18-volt LXT battery-powered pressure sprayer from Makita. Namely, the DUSO54, as you can already see in the solo version. Nevertheless, the question arises, what does this pressure sprayer have to offer, and is it worth investing in compared to a conventional pressure spraying device? We will thoroughly explore this in today's video. Let's start right after the intro, but as usual, if you haven't already, definitely subscribe to this channel quickly and activate the bell to not miss any new videos in the future. Now, let's get started after the intro. Yes, this is it, the brand new battery powered pressure sprayer from Makita, the DUS054Z, and it's in the 18 volt LXT format as clearly visible. I know we've all had to wait a long time, but now the moment has finally arrived. It's here on the table in front of me, and finally, the detailed test video. In my opinion, a great investment for those who, at least in theory, work a lot with a regular pressure sprayer and want to avoid the annoying pumping. That's why I would say, let's now see what this device is really capable of. So, the manual pressure sprayer can be set aside for now. Much more interesting is what's really inside this box. As you can already see from the outside, there isn't much to see on the product card. Of course, they emphasize the 18 volt system and the IP54 certification. Otherwise, that's it. On the left side, a nice picture and on the back, a few more features that the device comes with. So let's move on to the contents of the package. Inside, it looks like this. As you can see, very, very space saving. On the left side, there's an extremely thick catalog, the user manual in multiple languages. Next is the telescopic spray rod, and of course, not to be missed, the clip as well as the two nozzles. Moving on to the top with the hose of the sprayer and its handle or regulation. And finally, under the product box or packaging material, the actual pressure sprayer, the DUS054Z. And there we have it, the brand new Makita battery powered pressure sprayer in the 18 volt format. It certainly makes a very, very good impression. The entire housing, as well as the handle, is made of a beautiful, thick, and robust plastic. And on the underside, visible here in milky and thus slightly transparent plastic, the built-in tank. The first thing that stands out when you pick up the battery-powered pressure sprayer is that this device is surprisingly light. I mean, clearly, we have the pure solo version here, so there's no battery in it, no liquid in it, and of course, a lot of weight will be added to it. But I must say, the pressure sprayer is really very, very easy to handle. So, let's see what the scale says now. I suggest we start with the solo weight. As you can see, we're at just 2670 grams, plus, of course, the 18 volt battery, in this case, with 5 ampere hours, because we want to achieve a certain runtime. This puts us at a weight of 3300 grams, plus the corresponding liquid. As mentioned, a maximum of 5 liters can go in here. That means about 5 kilograms, and thus, we have a fighting weight, a gross weight, of a proud 8300 grams. And of course, not to forget the telescopic rod or the two small plastic nozzles. These, however, don't make a big difference here, so fueled with the battery, the pressure sprayer is, of course, significantly heavier than before. To ensure that this weight can be handled as well as possible, there is, as you can see, a relatively large-sized handle on the top for carrying and transporting the battery-powered pressure sprayer. It's not rubberized, but nicely rounded on the underside and quite comfortable to handle. The only control element of the battery-powered pressure sprayer is integrated directly into the handle on the top, namely the button for activation, and here at the back, a small battery level indicator. In my opinion, really well designed, both in terms of positioning. 
When I hold the pressure sprayer in my hand, I don't need to reach around or anything, but can activate or deactivate the device directly from the handle. And just as well in terms of implementation, meaning fortunately, we don't have a foil button to activate the pressure sprayer, but a nice toggle switch, around it a rubber cuff to meet the certification requirements, and behind it a small battery level indicator with three LEDs. And that's already it with the settings of this battery powered pressure sprayer. Therefore, I would say let's move on to the back, namely to the battery compartment. On the back, there's a slightly transparent cover, and underneath, the battery compartment. At the top is the locking mechanism, a small lever. Press it down slightly, and the compartment can be easily opened or locked again in the opposite direction. As you can see, directly below, here in black, a small rubber seal. As mentioned before, the entire battery-powered pressure sprayer is IP54 certified. This means it's protected against one-sided splashing water. Therefore, there's a rubber seal both at the battery compartment and also here at the on-off button on top. Directly below now, you can see the battery compartment or the two contacts. The battery is inserted from the back, from the top into the battery compartment, clicks in smoothly as usual, and the battery compartment cover can, of course, be closed again. For maximum runtime, it's recommended to use the largest possible battery here as well. In this case, for example, an 18 volt 5, if not 6 ampere hours. How long the battery will really last will be shown in the practical test, but easily through the battery level indicator, you can also check the respective battery status here. Moving on to the front with the attached hose and the tank. As you can see, right at the front, the screw cap for our large tank. As mentioned before, a total of 5 liters of volume fit in here easily. Compared to a hand pump sprayer, which usually holds up to 8 liters, we have 3 liters less here. In my opinion, not a problem because it makes the device somewhat more compact and lighter, and 5 liters should generally be enough. Otherwise, simply refill. Exactly for that, here is the screw cap, but not just any, because once I've removed it, you can see it. We have a small measuring container directly integrated, here a scale in 10 milliliter increments. In my opinion, it's extremely practical because in normal use, I spray with a pressure sprayer not just pure water, but usually a certain mixture of weed killer, fertilizer, etc. For example, 50 milliliters to 5 liters. So I fill this small measuring container with weed killer and fill the pressure sprayer with water accordingly. The whole thing is added and I have the perfect mixing ratio right here. By the way, on both the left and right sides there's a small scale, each in 1 liter increments up to 5 liters, so that we can regularly check how much liquid is actually still in the tank. In addition, if I want to fill the pressure sprayer with liquids I can, of course, do this easily through the small screw cap here at the front. Here this is quite fiddly. For that purpose, I can easily unscrew the entire pressure sprayer. So once separate the housing from the tank. Because it's actually intended to fill the pressure sprayer, or rather the tank, through this large opening. When you want to fill the tank, remove the motor housing here once, and then we have a huge opening directly underneath, as you can see, with a small filter. The filter itself can be easily removed and cleaned. On the side, there's a small recess where, of course, the suction hose from the pump extends into the tank. The pump itself looks like this, as mentioned before. Here, in black, the suction hose that extends into the tank. Here, in brown, a nice large seal that ensures a good seal for the tank. And here, in red, a small connection that serves the following purpose. If the pump is dirty, if any residues have accumulated in the pump and the pump can no longer draw water, then remove the red cover and flush the pump free. Assemble the part back the other way around, i.e. guide the suction hose into the designated hole, attach the pump, and screw it tight to the left. On the front, the outlet for the hose. It's a total of 1.7 meters long, more than enough. And on the front, accordingly, the handle by which we can activate the pressure sprayer. 
The handle itself, in my opinion, is also quite well done, both in terms of size and shape. You can see it here. The handle is neither too big nor too small and can be easily gripped. In handling, it's important to note that the lock must be activated right in the center. Otherwise, it can happen that the lock only engages on one side and gets stuck. Then the handle cannot be locked and you have to release and re-engage it in the center to lock the handle properly. So make sure to activate it right in the center, otherwise the whole system may jam. Not to forget, right at the front, the outlet with the one quarter inch thread for our telescopic pole. Here in white at the front. The pressure sprayer has a small pre-filter to prevent dirt from being forced through the small nozzles. So clean it regularly, attach the telescopic pole, and finally the two nozzles. What's special is that the spray rod itself is about 50 centimeters long. This is sufficient for most applications. Nevertheless, we have here a telescopic spray rod. This means we can extend it further. For this, there's a small thread at the front. With this, the telescopic spray rod can be extended by another 18 centimeters, totaling approximately 68 centimeters. At the very front, as mentioned before, the spray head with the two small nozzles. Both nozzles can be easily tilted or rotated, which is very practical for handling. This way, I can easily spray both the lawn area and hedge without having to bend completely, as I can simply tilt the two nozzles effortlessly. It's worth mentioning that I can also use just one nozzle for which there's a red shutoff valve at the top. So, if I want to cover a large area quickly, I would definitely use both nozzles, otherwise probably just one. It's also possible to adjust both nozzles separately. This means I can determine whether I want a focused stream or a wide spray. As you can see, very practical, and not to forget, this device can be stored relatively well. For this, there's included in the package this small black clip for mounting on the pressure sprayer. This clip is easily clicked onto the front of the telescopic rod, and then it's possible to store this rod on both sides of the pressure sprayer effortlessly. And with that, I would say let's finally switch to the test to see what this new battery-powered pressure sprayer is really capable of. So sit back and let's start the test. The first battery-powered pressure sprayer from Makita, the DUS-054. At first glance, it makes a quite good impression, but how does it perform in practice? That's exactly what we're going to look at together now. First, I equip the device with a large 18-volt battery with 5 ampere hours. This doesn't necessarily make the device lighter, but it ensures an enormously long runtime, as we'll see later. After activating it, you can read the respective battery levels on the top through the three green LEDs. Next, I filled the pressure sprayer tank with clean tap water and added our placebo fertilizer through the small measuring cup as an example. The tank holds a total of 5 liters, which, in my opinion, is sufficiently large. The opening to fill the container is well thought out, with the upper filter preventing coarse particles. Next, I extensively tested the pressure sprayer on the lawn and bushes. I must say, the operation is quite pleasant. The spray lance and the hose are sufficiently long and light, allowing for fatigue-free work over an extended period. What becomes apparent very quickly, on the other hand, is the weight of the actual device when filled. Because I have to admit, the 5 liters of liquid are definitely not light. Fortunately, the shoulder strap has a small rubber pad, which makes the whole thing a bit more comfortable. The advantage, after less than 10 minutes of continuous use, the tank is empty and thus the weight on the shoulders is gone. In my opinion, the Makita DUS-054 develops enough pressure with its continuous three bars to work effectively. The positive aspect is that there's no overpressure in the container itself, as you know it from conventional pressure sprayers. Instead, the pressure is achieved through a simple pump that sucks in the liquid. However, I also had to note that the pressure sprayer starts to draw a lot of air at around 0.5 liters remaining, so you should refill the tank when reaching this mark to continue working effectively. Complete emptying of the container is, in my opinion, not guaranteed. To increase efficiency for large areas, the double-headed nozzle on the spray lance can be rotated 360 degrees and even extended. 
This extends the spray lance by another 20 centimeters, enabling an upright posture. Through a small red shutoff valve, it's also possible to turn the second nozzle on or off, which I personally find very practical. Also found on the handle is a small plastic lever to lock the trigger. Admittedly, it's a bit wobbly, but it still serves its purpose. By the way, regarding battery life, as we suspected, I found that the Makita DUS-054 is very energy efficient. After applying approximately 20 liters on my lawn, the large 5 ampere hour battery still had 4 out of 4 bars. All in all, I can say that the battery powered pressure sprayer has convinced me in the test. Typical of Makita, it has good craftsmanship, a large 5 liter tank, a double headed nozzle, and no annoying pumping. For those who regularly need to work on large areas or bushes, an investment is definitely worthwhile. Now it's your turn. What do you think of the new battery-powered pressure sprayer from Makita DUS-054? Feel free to share your opinion in the comments below. I'm very interested in your feedback. And with that, I would say it's already the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, show it with a strong thumbs up. And if you haven't already, definitely subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell to not miss any new videos in the future. You can find the current prices to support this channel in the video description below. Many thanks for your attention, and with that, I would say take care and we'll see you next time. Stay healthy. Goodbye.